Hey, this is Steven from The Green Engineers, and welcome back to my research video series on my YouTube channel. We are back in part two of how does moisture and PLA filament affect surface quality. So I've done another two days of printing, a total of about uh, four or so more samples, additional samples, to compare with my previous samples from the first video. So uh, this video is going to be broken down into four parts. The first part is going to be what I did for my experiment. Second part is going to be the results from that particular experiment. Third is going to be what actions I would uh, recommend that you take out of these results. So I will uh, suggest some things that I've learned from the results that you could do to prevent any uh, impact on surface quality. Four is going to be what additional research I'm going to have to do to complement these findings and also to um, further back up these findings as well as expand on these findings to uh, further under understand the issue and solutions to take to solve these issues. Alright, so first we're going to talk about what I did for the experiment. So, first thing I did from the experiment is I took my octave 1.75 millimeter PLA filament and I cut about 25 feet off of it for a total of, what did I do, about uh, nine, 9 coils. So I call them nine coils or nine samples. So 25 feet equals about 21 to 22 grams. Then what I do is I take those coils or samples and I weigh them on a scale that is accurate to two decimal points in grams. So a, a hundredth of a gram. And I you know, record that result. Then I take those coils or samples and I put them in a pitcher of water for a week to allow them to take on moisture. Then I will take them out of the pitcher of water and then weigh them again after I clean off all the surface water because I don't want to take into effect the weight of the surface water that's just sitting on top of the filament. Then I will calculate the percent of moisture by weight. And I do that by taking your initial value, which would be um, the lower value, and I divide it by the bigger value, which is the value of uh, mass or weight after I take it out of the pitcher of, wa uh, pitcher of water. Then you'll get a very small, you'll get a uh, value that's very close to 1, something like 0.99 or 0.98. Then what I did is I just subtracted 1 from that, and you'll get a negative value, and a negative value like uh, negative 0 0.002, 0 0.005, something like that, and then you'll multiply by 100, and that will be your particular percent. Then what I did is I took those coils, and I, those coils or samples, and I put them inside a very efficient toaster oven at 150 Fahrenheit, and I would take them out in different intervals to look at how much moisture is inside of the filament at that point. Then I'll take, if it's at a particular point that I want in order to get a varying um, amount of moisture content to test, I will take them out and record that weight and also calculate the percent by weight at that point as well. Then what I'll do is I will go to my uh, Delta Castle here and I will print the, um, the benchies. So the settings on the Castle I've changed since the first video. Now I'm printing at 225 which is what I normally print at. And I also dropped down the uh, speed of printing down to about 75 millimeters per second or 70 millimeters per second somewhere around there. Then I look at the results and compare the, and compare the surface quality results and um, then come, up, come to a conclusion. Okay, so we're going to talk about the results of the experiment. So there are two main um, numbers that I want to bring your attention to. Number one is the average percent by weight in a home environment. And number two is the maximum amount of weight that I got the a PLA coil to hold coming out of the pitcher of water the maximum amount of moisture that I got to hold. So first is the finding of the room environment, the percent by weight. So the average percent by weight in my climate in California, which is pretty stable day to day, has a variance of about 7 degrees Fahrenheit plus or minus, and the relative humidity is pretty common. So when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about in a room environment, not necessarily outside, but in a room environment, this particular room they store my filament in, uh, has about a plus or, uh, plus or minus uh, 7 degrees Fahrenheit um, change between different parts of the day and um, especially now when a hotter climate it, it keeps it pretty steady at plus or minus se uh, 7 
And then I'm going to assume since it's pretty comfortable to live in here that the relative humidity is um, not changing as much either. So I got this finding of 0.323% uh, percent by weight by taking again a, um, a spool of a coil of 25 feet of filament which weighed about 21.73 grams and then I threw it directly into the toaster oven and baked it at 100 foot, 150 Fahrenheit for four hours. Now I'm going to assume that that is 0% by weight, that that is the most amount of moisture I could take out of that filament. Now it'll never approach, it'll never get to zero because once you take the filament out, it starts to take on moisture again between the time that I take it out and the time that I put it on the scale. And also it might not let go of all the moisture. So just uh, just for our experiment, we're going to assume that that's 0% by weight. So 0.323, we'll be using that um, more times in our result, looking at our results here. The next number is the percent by weight that I got, uh, the max percent by weight that I got from uh, putting moisture into the filament, the maximum amount it could hold. So the maximum uh, amount, the uh, maximum percent that I got the uh, PLA filament to hold the moisture is 1.101 percent. Now, one thing that you need to uh, remember from these metrics is that these are from samples that were taken right from the room environment and put in and put into the pitcher of water. So what we found is that it already has moisture in it before I put it into the pitcher of water. So you have to take the um, the 0.323 which is the percent of weight that an average room environment has, you have to add it to these findings. So I have a percent of 1.101, and then I need to add 0.323, so that's a 1.4, 1.5 percent by weight that the filament will hold. So using that, uh, comparing that to the 0.323, that's almost five times the amount of moisture that you'll have in any filament that is in a room environment. So. So it should be, of course, five times as worse uh, surface quality, if you think of it that way. The main two, um, the main two prints that we're going to be looking at in this particular video are is sample one and sample two of my second day of printing. Now, sample one and sample two. Sample one had a uh, 0.1867% by weight. So you also have to take that one and you have to add the 0.323. So that gives you a uh, 0.5 or so percent by weight. Then my second one, uh, my second sample is 0 0.2761, which I count as a 0.6, I mean, uh, yeah, 0.6 percent by weight. So I have a 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. So the 0 0.5 is almost, is almost double the amount of moisture that is in a standard room environment, and sample two is double the amount of weight of um, moisture that you would find in an average uh, room environment. Um, an, an average room environment PLA. Now, I will add on some overlays onto the video of looking between these different um, these different samples, between the baked sample, uh, between sample one and sample two. So baked sample, sample one, sample two, and you'll see that the di that the varying difference between each of them is very is very small. So even though the baked one from my first video will be assumed to have 0% by uh, weight uh, moisture content. Um, it doesn't vary much between that and sample 1 and sample 2. And sample 1 and sample 2 don't vary too much either. It's only a 0.1% difference in um, moisture content. So those also don't vary too much. And you'll also notice in, in sample 1 there is a uh, there was an extrusion error there where um, it got clogged for a second. And I'll talk about those issues in a later video, which uh, I found other issues in this video that I need to talk about as far as baking filament. Okay, so now we're going to get to the my findings and what my final conclusion is. So does moisture really affect PLA filament surface quality? I have two answers. Number one, of course it does. If you notice from my first video and even from some of the ones that I printed in this video, uh, or, or in this second part of the experiment, that if you have filament that sits in water for a week, and then you pull the filament out of the water and you immediately print it, you are going to get bubbles and ripples. And so here I have two more 
prints that I did with the waterlogged filament that I did not bake any of the moisture out. And it has even even uh, severe, even more severe uh, bubbling and rippling. And then also, you know from my first video, the bubbling and rippling there. So we're not going to take a look at those samples again because they're the same exact thing as the one in the first video. Number two is, do you have to worry about your moisture sitting inside of a room environment, the, the moisture content of your filament sitting around in a room environment impacting your prints. The answer to that question is not really. As you've seen from this second video, we've had filament that has twice, that has twice the amount of moisture content and we've seen filament printed that has zero moisture uh, content. And the varying difference between each is very little. And also from our first video, we had samples that had room environment. So we've had a total of baked, room, and then sample one, sample two. So we'll just take into effect sample two. Sample two is double the room environment. So we've had one that has zero moisture, and then 0.3% and 0.6%. And the difference between the three is very little. So what that means is that as long as you take care as far as where you put your, your, your filament, as far as the environment, as you put it in a room, or obviously you're going to want to keep it in the building and not outside, but you keep it in a room that has pretty constant climate of very low varying temperatures and also pretty constant relative humidity and have that relative humidity lowered. And if you don't have any place like that or you are worried about it, you can put it in a plastic baggie like this and just throw some desiccant in there enough that you'll be able to suck, uh, that you'll be able to lower the uh, relative humidity inside of the bag. And just keep it inside that baggie to make sure that you don't, if anything, you don't add any extra moisture to your filament. Because I'm going to, t uh, I'm going to assume, which I'll talk about this a little later as well, um, that the standard climate in most places is not going to vary much from this 0.3%. So I think that the point um, the point six percent of sample two is a very extreme scenario for most average climates if you store them in a good place that even doesn't have a desiccant or anything like that. If you store it out in the environment, I think that that even that will be an extreme um, extreme scenario. All right. So what actions can you take from this video? Of course, like I, uh, from the, from these findings. Of course, like I said. You, you store it in an appropriate environment, in a place that has a pretty constant climate where uh, the temperature doesn't vary too much and the relative humidity is low. Then you want to also, uh, if you can't do that, store your filament inside of a baggie or double baggie it. You want as thick of walls as possible because sometimes these could be permeated by uh, moisture and um, put some desiccant in there to hold any, to drop the relative humidity inside the bag down. So at worst, um, at worst case scenario, your filament doesn't um, take on any extra moisture. Another thing is also make sure that uh, your, if you remember from our first video, the after the fact print had similar, qual uh, similar quality to the baked filament. And all I did for the after the fact the uh, extrusion is I took it right out of the room environment, so I just printed right off the spool, and I had a higher temperature of extrusion, 8 degrees Celsius higher. And it printed with similar quality to the baked filament, which was held at 150 Fahrenheit inside of a oven at, uh, for 4 hours. So the difference between the 3%, the difference in quality between the 3%, and the 0% is just 7 degrees Celsius higher extrusion temp. Actually, it was 8 degrees Celsius higher extrusion temp. So, what that means is that when you're setting up your printer, try to find the maximum um, extrusion uh, temperature that you could print with. So, of course, a few variables with that is the layer adhesion you want, the amount of stringing you want. So, you might need to raise uh, your, your retracts in order to get a higher extrusion temperature, but... Uh, if you want to minimize the amount of stringing, which these do have a lot of stringing, is you would drop, is you would raise your your retracts, and if that doesn't help, then you would want to drop your um, your extrusion temperature to minimize as much stringing, or to the point where you don't have any stringing. 
So just try to maximize the temperature that you print at um, for, for the given uh, surface quality and or finish that you are looking for. All right, so part four is uh, what else am I going to need to do? And there, uh, um, what other research? Number one is do desiccants actually take moisture out of filament? That's one. Number two is uh, what is the average relative humidity and um, variance of temperature in an environment like mine and other environments? And how does that affect the moisture quality, the moisture quantity and filament? So that way you could better uh, gauge um, where to store your filament if you're not going to store them all in baggies or something like that. And uh, number three, the main one, is that in these in this series we were only looking at the surface quality. So there's another um, there's another metric that we could look at where we're talking about the actual um, strength. So from from my experience making filament in my multi sphere extrusion system. I know that if the moisture quantity, if the moisture um, percent is even like 0.2%, it will cause um, brittle filament. So if you have 0.2% of moisture, uh, or even like 0.1, um, very, very low. So let's just say if you have very, very, even very, very low, if is because you want to extrude, you want to extrude with pretty much no moisture. So even if you have very, very low moisture uh, content, it will cause brittle filament to where you just bend it a little bit and it'll snap. So now with these, they would have good surface quality, but I don't know if it affects the strength of the part. But of course that's pretty hard to test because you have different variables like, you know, how the how the actual print went and um, you know where the infill is, the present infill, stuff like that. But I might be able to test if the if uh, filament moisture does affect the strength of the part. But of course, if you're doing statues or figurines and you're just looking for surface quality and you don't really care about the strength of the part, that doesn't really affect you that much. All right, so those are another few things that I that I uh, am going to be looking at in order to get a better definitive answer for uh, how moisture affects PLA 3D printing. All right, that is the that is the end of this video. I like thank you guys for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching my research video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos in the research series. Also, if you like my research series and you would like to help fund more videos and content, please check out my Patreon in the description below where I have some really unique rewards and stretch goals to add more content to uh, the research series and also other things that you can get exclusives to as well. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.